You know, this morning, while I got up, I had an attack from the enemy. Because God had something wonderful that he's going to do today, and the devil didn't want it. And I got up, and I felt something around. And I said, Lord, what it is? And I saw the power of darkness, and I said, God, break it by the blood of the Lamb. Because you have something for the church today, and the people are hungry. And he did it. You know, friends, I am not somebody that I just walk like you. You and I are the same. But God has given us direction in our life. And every direction he gives, we must be careful that we follow his direction. There are many voices that come, but may God help us. You know, even at this age, I also have to struggle for that. But every time when we ask God, he directs us. And I want to talk to you about looking at the right direction. You know, in 1 King 18, 43, if you have your Bibles, I shouldn't say if you have a Bible, if you come to church, you must bring your Bible. <laughs> you know, I remember in our younger days, our pastor always said, did you bring your Bible? You know, some of us like, were guilty, we didn't bring. But if you have your Bible, you turn to 1 King 18, 43. Elijah was praying for rain, you remember? That he felt in his spirit, but he didn't see it with his natural eyes. And he told his servant to go and look. And the servant went out and looked. What answer did he give? Negative. You know, sometimes it's like that. When we are praying, God already gave us an answer, but we haven't seen it, so it looks negative. And here the servant went. Several times, seven times he went. First king says, at the seventh time, he said, I saw a little cloud. You know, sometimes when you and I are praying, eh, we expect God to give us big answers. It may not come that way. It may just come a little answer, a small little vision first, a small little gift. And that's what he saw. He said, I saw a little cloud like the hand of a man. The cloud was so small. But how can a small cloud bring mighty rain? That is where our faith stands. You know, so he went and he saw a little cloud. Notice, when we show, when God shows us a direction, where, we, where the answer will come from, We must be faithful. We must have faith to believe the answer. Sometimes, you know, we pray for certain things and we expect God to give us answer in a different direction. But whatever it is you're praying, if you're faithful, God will give you the answer. The vision. You must have a vision. Amos 3, 3 says, Can two walk together except they make an appointment, an agreement? You know, two person, if they don't agree together, they cannot walk together. So it's with us. If we as a church are not collective to believe God to do a mighty work for this church that you can reach the soul sounds like it's not going to happen. We must be united. Amen? Unity is strength, my friend. He says two must work together. That is alignment. The warning is this. He says, can two be with... You see, you can be with the prophet. You can come to church regularly. And yet, your spiritual eyes may be blinded. Yeah misguided. 
You know, it doesn't mean to say that every one of us that comes to church is going up there. Unless each one of us, you and me included, are in the right alignment with God. May God help us. Amen. This is a very serious thought, you know. As I was praying, I was thinking, Lord, we all have been going to church for many years, some of us. We grew up. But is our life aligned with your lifestyle? Only God has the answer. I don't know. God knows. You have to make that alignment with God. You can come to church, but only God knows whether we are in line with Him. The warning here was we can be blinded, right? That's the warning. We can be blinded. You know, this morning when I was praying, I suddenly felt such a dark spirit. And I knew it was not from the Lord. God wants to do something in this church today and he was trying to stop it. I said, Lord, by the blood of the Lamb. And suddenly, I felt the whole room changed. And the Spirit of the Lord fell and He gave me peace. You know, friend, you are in church today. God has something for each one of you. Every one of us have a calling. It does not mean to say it just from the pulpit. Every day of our life is a calling from God. What you speak, what you think, it's a calling where you go. He has a purpose for your church. I don't know, but this is what I felt. God wants to use everyone. It's not only the work of the elders and the pastors. Each one of us have a calling. You have to ask God, Lord, direct me, show me, and he will. You know, even just going to someone and, and saying hello to a stranger can be a blessing. You know, many times in my own life, I walk down and I see somebody standing. I say, hello, can I help you? The fellow, it's all right. Then I begin to talk. And when I begin to talk, I'm able to be, give him a witness. God wants each one of you to be a witness. You know, what was so heavy in my heart this morning was that we are at the end of time. Friends, time is running out. For all of us, if we don't take it, who's going to do it for him? I challenge you today. This has been such a burden in my heart that you will do Whatever God wants you to do. Whatever he wants you to say, do it. Wherever he calls you to go, go. You know, sometimes we say, I don't have a calling. Who said so? God has a calling for each one of us. Amen. He's a calling. You can walk down the street, huh? and suddenly you see somebody, your smile may encourage him. And your word. Just, how are you? God wants to use you. And that is our warning. You know, look at Elijah. His servant was with him all the time. But he was, he didn't see the way Elijah saw. And Elijah told him, go and see. He went there. But how many times? How many times? Six, seven times. On the seventh time, he said, I saw a little cloud. You know, sometimes when you are praying, God brings out a certain word. And that little word can be a blessing to your heart. Many times, 
I don't know what to do when in, the, in my life. And I say, Lord, what is it? Like this morning, I told you, when I got up, I felt such a big cloud of darkness. You know, it was just crushing me down. I broke down. I said, Lord, by the blood of the Lamb, remove it. You know, sometimes, friend, you have to stand firm for what you believe. Don't listen to the voices that are calling you. That's a warning. You cannot all the time listen to what outside, but listen to what God wants you to. Look at this example of Elijah. He told his servants, go and see. Look out, he said, for the cloud. Six times. And the seventh time, he said, I saw a little cloud. You know, sometimes while praying, God will give you an answer, a small, a little answer. That's enough to walk the road. We don't have to have great miracles. The miracle is to let your ears be open to what he's speaking. And God will open his door. You know, for example, Elijah's servant did not see the cloud six times, I told you. No spiritual eyes. But Elijah's servant also did not see the great chariot of fire in 2 Kings. If you read 2 Kings 6, 17 to 20, he didn't see the great chariot of fire of the Lord. And what did Elijah say? God opened his eyes. You know, we must ask God to open our eyes in his word as we read. And he will open your eyes. He will give you visions. He'll give you understanding. Nobody else can do. Only he can do. Amen? Discernment. Now, we all like to have discernment, spiritual discernment. But there are also conflicting voices that will come that blinds our spiritual eyes. The only way for you to have discernment is what? How do you do it? Study the word, spend time in the Lord, seek his face, pray. Friends, people cannot give you discernment, only the Lord. You have to take the effort. You know, it's an effort to put aside time that you say, I'm going to put this time and study his word, pray, and wait upon the Lord. In spite of the work that I have, and you find when you do that, every other thing will come online. Do you believe that? Amen? Yes. I have to do it. You have to do it. If you want to grow in the Lord, that is the only way. Not just coming, sitting on Sunday. You need to open up his word and study it and say, Lord, teach me. You know, we can go to Bible school and come out and we still do not know enough until you yourself bend your knees and ask God. I, I, I always remember my principal when we were in Bible school. He said, Whatever you hear must go in here. But he said, the only way you're going to do it is you yourself got to get down on your knees and ask God. And today I challenge you. Just don't, just hear what I'm saying. But let the word of God go deep in your heart. Read the word. And see what God has for you. Every one of us have a different ministry. And that's how the church is going to grow. Some are called to be pastors. Some are God. All of us have got a calling, you know. Wherever you are, you've got a calling. Some can speak very well. Some can design. Some got the gift of the gap. Speak, like I said. Some can draw. Some can go to places that you and I cannot go. When God asked us to go to the jungle many years ago, I was wondering, 
How am I going to go to the jungle? It's not easy. But whatever he calls you, he will give you the strength to do it. Amen? Yes, he will. He has a calling for each one of us. But you must ask the Lord, Lord, direct me to that calling. Amen? And he will. You see, and he will open your eyes. Just like he did for Elijah's servant. He didn't see the chariot of fire in 2 Kings 6, 17. And the, Elijah said, Lord, open his eyes. God must open your eyes. And how do you do it? The word of God. It's not just coming on Sunday, hearing, but we ourselves must desire and hunger to read his word and what we have heard to ask God to show us the direction where he wants us to go. That's what I believe. Discernment is very important, spiritual discernment. You cannot get it overnight. You have Pray and seek the Lord for it. There are also conflicting voices. Yes, that will blind your eyes. You know, today, we, everybody is so busy. But we all have 24 hours and we all have time. And we can make priorities in that time. Our focus must be we must learn to tune away all the confusion and doubts and only hear what God has promised for your life and for your family you know God has promised something for you that is different from somebody else and what he's calling you to do you must focus on that and put away all the other confuse, confusion and other thoughts and when you do it, you will walk in the direction where the Lord wants you to lead. You know, every one of us have a calling. I said, every one of us have a calling. Only you know your calling when you allow God to direct you. And I pray today that you will have that hunger and seek the Lord. Pray, seek the Lord. Study his word. When you hear a sermon from the pulpit, when the pastor preached, go back home and look back what the pastor said. I remember when we were young, our pastors would say, when you go to church, he said, take a pen and a pencil. And when I was young, you know, in the Lord, I was wondering why. He said, when you hear something, Write it down. And when you come back, go back to the Word of God and look at it. And let that Word grow in you. Friends, God wants each one of us to grow in His Word. And you can only do it by prayer, reading His Word, and fasting. It's very important that we seek Him. Maybe we are all not called to be pastors, but we are all called to be a witness for the Lord. Amen? Hey, you're very quiet. Amen? Amen. Yes! We are all called to be witnesses. He didn't, call me, he didn't call only just a few of us to be pastors. Every one of you are a pastor in where you are, in your working place, in your home, in your society. You know, even your neighbours, huh? can see your home, your lifestyle, and they can know that you are different. Yes, it should be like that. And that's what God wants us to see. He said, I want to direct you according to my will, not the way we want. You know, many times we want our way. We say, God, I want this way. But it may not be the best way. He may direct us to a way that we don't like, that's not popular. What popularity does not bring 
anything good. Sometimes, God wants us to be willing to be directed by His way. You know, when I was thinking this morning, I said, God, what do you want this church to be? This is what He said, a lighthouse. Amen? Not only the pastor, every one of you are a lighthouse where you stay in your, in your society, to your neighbor, in your working place, you are a lighthouse. What is a lighthouse? It shines. Light brings out the glory. People must see the glory of the Lord in your life, my friends. Amen? He must see the glory of the Lord in your life. Not just coming to church on Sunday and say, I'm a Christian. And there's nothing that they see. Your home is just as hopeless as the rest of them. No, your home must be a house where people will say, that house has such a quietness, such a blessing, such a unity, <coughs> such a peace, and the joy. There must be joy in your face. You know, many times you look at the Christian, they are just like one of the others. Because they have not learned to walk in the presence of the Lord. They have not learned how to say, Lord, teach me your way. You know, when God teaches his way, it's different. It's a hard way. Maybe the way that you don't want to go, but when you're willing to follow, that way will be a blessing. Your home will be a blessing. And you don't have to worry about the rest of the thing. You will be blessed People will be blessed and the joy of the Lord will be your strength and every need will be met. You know, every time people ask me, I never forgot this. How come huh, you're always smiling? I say, why? Because I have the joy of the Lord. Then I'm able to tell them my testimony. Don't walk down with your face Strange. Let the joy of the Lord prevail from your heart and come out that the people around your society, your house, your neighbors will see that your house is a different house because in your house there is peace, there is joy, there is unity. That is all about the word of God. Amen? Then he will direct your ways. Then he will prosper you. You know, Prosperity is not money, you know, friends. Prosperity is being in the, in, in the Lord that He will bring that joy in your heart and when the joy comes, everything else will come together. And I want to challenge you today. Which direction are you going? Are you going the right direction or are you going on your own direction? He told us, Seek my face and I will direct you. That's my challenge today. My challenge to you is God has a direction for each one of you and for your life. Wherever you are, you are to be the light in that area. Amen? You are to be the light. You should smile. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Let us focus on that. You know, many years ago, a friend of mine came over. She said to me, she said, you know, I see, she's a non-Christian, she said, I see that there's so much, when I look at a Christian, they always smile. She said, how come, uh, the, they, we all have trouble. I could tell them because they have the Lord with them. Amen? The joy of the Lord is your strength. Today, he says, I have a direction for you. And what is your direction? Only you, God will lead you to. And you have to follow that direction. Amen? And when he does, he will teach you the right way. 
and he will bless you and he will guide you. You must have a hunger. If you don't have a hunger, he cannot do anything. If you're not hungry, how can you be fed? You must be hungry for the word of God. You must be hungry to wait upon the Lord. You must be hungry to seek God. And every time the church door opens, come in. Bible study, prayer meeting, pray together. Be hungry for God and be a witness for God. That's all he's asking us. He didn't ask you for your money or anything. When you walk in his blessing, all your needs will be provided. Do you believe it? Amen? Yes. He will. You don't have to worry. Our God holds the whole universe. And he says, I will meet you and I will direct you. There must be the hungry. Elijah prayed for his servant's eyes to be opened. He couldn't see the chariots of fire. He didn't see the cloud. But Elijah prayed for his servant. Pray that God will open your eyes to his word. I don't know what direction he is leading you. Maybe God is calling some of you to full-time ministry or maybe to do another work for the Lord. But you are hesitant. Let your eyes be focused on what God is speaking to your heart. Don't listen to the voice outside. Look to God. Elijah told the servant, go and look seven times. Finally, he said, I saw a little cloud. You know, sometimes God gave us an answer in a small way. And you, you may think it's it's nothing. But from that small gift, he can use you for his glory. Do you believe that? Amen? I feel in my heart while I'm standing here that God has a calling for some of you young people to be ministers. But you are thinking, let God direct you. There is a calling for some of you. I don't know who they are, but I believe so. Not only from the pulpit, but other ministry, music ministry, all kinds of ministry. Every ministry for the Lord is for his kingdom. Everything unites us together and the direction. But we need to be willing. It may take time, but if you're open, he can do it. Are you ready? You know, sometimes we look at ourselves and we think what God has put for us to do, we can't do. No. Are you ready? Would you bow your heads with me, please? Are you ready? If you're ready, that God is speaking to you today, it doesn't matter what ministry. I want to challenge you. 